us reflecting on, you know, the communion for this uh, this week. I shared a little bit of this on Friday night. And Jeanette, um, not being here, who's going to share communion today, just asked me to share this. And I was I was drawn to a particular scripture in Luke 23, verse 28. And Jesus has been sentenced to be crucified. And he's on his way to the cross. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, sorrow and uh, following him down the street as he's carrying the cross. Particularly by the women who are so close and dear to his life. And as he's walking down the road to Golgotha, he turns to these women, in particular the Marys, his mother, Mary Magdalene, the third Mary. And he says to them, he says, Daughters of Jerusalem, don't weep for me. But weep for yourselves and for your children. And it's what he was saying is saying, Don't weep for me because I'm not a helpless victim in this. I am going to the cross. This is not Satan winning. This is me conquering. This is me saving. This is me flipping things on its head. This is me bringing in a new covenant. And this covenant that I'll make with you, it'll be forever. And it will be sealed by the blood that you see on the road right now. That is sealing this covenant. Don't weep for me. But instead, weep for your children and yourselves. And what he means by that is, he's saying, he's saying, weep for the sin that caused the Son of Man to be crucified. The, the, the men and women, those sons and daughters made in the image of God, who are now crucifying him, weep for the sin that could so twist something that was made so beautiful and that could do something so horrendous. Weep for that. Weep for the sin. Weep for when, when, when the nail was put in his hand. Weep for the sin that drove it there. We're not weeping because he's helpless, because he doesn't know what he's doing. We're, we are rejoicing that he, he knows exactly what he's doing. There's the quote that if the devil knew that he was going to, he was crucifying the Lord of glory, he never would have done it. He never would have done it if he had known the outcome of what was going on on the cross, yeah? Jesus has the final word. And there's a particular quote that um, by, there's a particular quote by Oswald Chambers and um, when Jesus is on the cross and he's got the final word and he says, don't weep for me. I'm not helpless. Don't weep for me. I, I've, I've told you Sunday is coming. I've told you it over and over that there will be life, that I will raise. I will raise from the dead. They, they, they were not naive. They knew it. He said, don't weep for me. And he's on the cross and he, he, he's taking his final breaths. And he asks for the wine, the sour wine, just enough so he can get out some final words. His lips are parched, he's dry, and he asks for the he asks for the wine so he can get out some final words. And those final words were, "It is finished. It is finished." This is what Oswald Chambers says: the greatest note of triumph that has ever sounded in the ears of a startled universe was sounded on the cross of Christ. It is finished. The la that is the last word in the redemption of man. The last word. Jesus had the last word. The cross is not something for us to weep on. It's something to celebrate. It's something to celebrate. Today, we celebrate Jesus' victory over sin and over death that made a way for us to come into right relationship with our Father again. Amen. Amen. Let's take our communion together. Can we all stand? Father, we hold to you these emblems, Lord. And in the beauty of your holiness, we remember and we celebrate what you've done for us on this day, God. You are the conqueror. You are the victor and you are the saviour. And you have brought us into a place of everlasting covenant with you, our Father. And today we take the bread and we take the wine and we say thank you, Jesus.